I hope you're ready because today's video is jam-packed with wood DIYs for... Hold on. Much better. Today we're DIYing for Christmas in July. This is Whiskey and Wit. My name's Whitney and on this channel I love to share DIYs and budget home decor content so if you like that too be sure to hit subscribe so we can be craft buddies. Now for the past few years I have loved doing wood projects for Christmas in July because it allows me to get a lot of the pieces that I want to make done well ahead of time before it gets really cold here in Illinois. So we're gonna head to the hardware store, we're gonna pick up some super affordable fence pickets and I've got a ton of inspiration for you today to get you jump started on the Christmas season and you can also sell all of these projects as well to make extra money for Christmas, so win-win. Up first, we are gonna make these super easy but really cute wood skis. As we use fence pickets throughout this video, we're gonna use a few different kinds from the traditional dog ear like this to some of the more pointed ones that we're gonna use for these skis. Now mine were outside, so keep that in mind as you're looking. And I got mine from Menards, but you can get yours from any hardware store and the pricing is going to be comparable. Especially if you live somewhere with a cold winter like I do, summer is a great time to buy them. So for these skis, I grabbed two pointed fence pickets and at Menards they ended up being $3.58 for two of them. Now while I'm looking at the wood, I'm going to hold it up and look straight down it like this to make sure it is not curved. There's plenty to choose from so make sure you get a good piece of wood without a ton of knots as well. So I'm going in with my power sander, I'm sanding the whole thing, and then I'm going to curve the end so it looks more like a ski. I'm doing that by rocking my wrist around each of the corners, and that's going to help A, sand it down, and B, have it be more of a curved look instead of so pointed. Then I'm grabbing one of my favorite stain colors, Briar Smoke by Verthane, and I'm staining both of my skis. Now you can decorate yours however you want. I decided to do varsity type lines at the end. So I'm using one inch painters tape to tape off that. I started with one piece at the bottom flush with the bottom of my ski. Then I'm using a spacer piece, putting another piece. And then in the middle, I ended up using two widths of the one inch painters tape. So I had a thicker stripe in the middle. If you plan to put these outside, I would recommend sealing with a polycrylic or a polyurethane. And I also decided to add this really cute ski lift sign it was really easy to make I grabbed some of these craft wood letters from Hobby Lobby but you can get them at any craft store and I just spray painted them white it was quicker than hand painting them I glued them onto a scrap stained piece of fence picket that I had from other projects later in the video added an arrow and some jute twine and this thing is ready to go this video is also a collab with some of my absolute favorite crafty friends here on YouTube. It's organized by Shannon from The Daily DIYer and The Cozy Christmas Cottage. If you didn't know, Shannon has a second channel that she kicks off in July and it runs all the way through Christmas and she shares a ton of great Christmas specific content over there. So all of that info will be linked down below as well as a playlist so you can check out everybody's video and you will have a ton of inspiration to get your wheels turning for Christmas. Now for the rest of the video we are going to be using variations of these dog-eared fence pickets. For this one I am using one that is six inches wide by four feet tall. Now I'm starting by trimming out lengths of this wide planked board for these gingerbread houses I'm about to make. So once I have the size I'm going to mark the center and then I'm cutting 45 degree angles on either side to the center of my board to create a little house shape. Now if you have a miter box, you can do this as well. I'm just using a chop saw. I did a similar thing to some scrap two by four that I wanted to share with you. My brother had this in his workshop, but I cut two 45 degree angles on that two by four and then made three different sizes of houses for the same project. Another option too is if you have a jigsaw, you can cut out more intricate shapes. I decided to do a house with a chimney here. Now to start making these look like Christmas, I'm taking the color Nutmeg Brown and acrylic paint and painting everything, all sides, top, bottom, the whole nine. Then once it dries, it's time to ice them. So I'm using some puffy paint to get the look of icing. I did this last year in my Christmas baking video, so if you like gingerbread, you've got to check that out. This is super easy. I just pulled up some images of a variety of gingerbread houses and used the puffy paint. It's pretty easy to squeeze and draw because it's got a fine tip, and it's also really easy to make it look like icing. So here I'm just flooding the roof of my two by fours and creating little drips so it looks like the icing is nice and fresh and hot and just dripping off of those gingerbread houses. These 
are super easy to make and I am so excited to add these to my gingerbread decor in the new house and these would also make a great addition to a vendor booth or something you could throw up on Facebook marketplace to sell locally in your community. You could crank out a bunch of these on a weekend and make some extra cash for Christmas. These three here are all the fence picket ones and they do stand up on their own as well, which is a huge plus. Now, if you peep that gingerbread lane sign, I'm gonna show you how you can create a really fun Christmas sign, super cheap without a Cricut. So I'm grabbing some thinner fence pickets, which are about four inches wide, and I'm gonna use my miter box to cut a piece to about 20 inches wide. This is something you can get really inexpensively over on Amazon. It comes with the yellow box I'm using here, as well as the saw. You can do straight cuts as well as 45 degree angles, and it allows you to make projects like this without a big saw. Now I cut two pieces of my one by two for the top and the bottom, just the same length. And then I cut two pieces on either side to finish out my framing. Now that's totally optional. I just like to frame out my signs. Then I'm gonna stain all of the frames as well as the back of my sign in briar smoke. That just makes the back of your sign look finished if you put it on a table or something, then you don't have to worry about the unfinished wood. After I painted the opposite side white, then it was time to grab some more of those letters that I used on that ski lodge sign and create what I wanted to say. I decided to do gingerbread lane. I spray painted them with some matte red spray paint. It's just a lot easier than getting into all the nooks and crannies of these little intricate letters. And then I'm taking my detailed glue gun and gluing them all down. I used some painter's tape to help me make sure everything was gonna be straight. And then I decided I wanted to add a little bit more red to the sign, so I just added a little stripe underneath with some more painter's tape. Once that was all dry, it was time to assemble. And so I started with the pieces that were flush. So that's the top and bottom trim piece. I'm using a nail gun, but this is a simple project. You could easily use a hammer and finishing nails to add these on. This is a really quick and easy way to make some of these fun signs, especially if you don't have a way to cut out a stencil. You could also Cricut this obviously, or you could head to places like Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Joann's to get some stencils. They've got some fun Christmas ones usually every year. so. The sky's the limit, but with a fence picket, this is like a $4 sign. I have been wanting to make a new Christmas card display for a while now, and I thought these fence pickets would be perfect. So I'm grabbing three of those wide planked ones. These are the six inch across, and I am then taking a scrap piece of my thinner one, so the four inch wide, to mark and cut some braces. So they don't have to be perfect. You just wanna make sure that they stretch across all three pieces so you can brace it and hook them together. I also decided to take off the dog ear on the top so it would be straight before I sanded, but you could leave that and not need a saw for that portion. Then I am staining all of my pieces, including the braces with briar smoke, letting them dry overnight. And then we're gonna assemble our sign. So the three braces go right on the back and then I'm using one inch nails with my nail gun on all these projects. The one inch is perfect. If you don't have a nail gun, you could do screws or a hammer and nails to hook them all together. Then I wanted to add a little personality to it, so I decided to create a stencil out of Magic Cover from Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that later, but it is really easy. I just cut it on the washi setting, and it's a cheap way to create a stencil. So this says, what's a Christmas gram? I want one from the movie Elf. It's one of my favorites. You guys know I Die on the Hill of Christmas Vacation is the best Christmas movie, but Elf is definitely a close second. I've got a full video of Elf inspired DIYs if you want to check that out. But here I'm just going through with a foam brush and tapping up and down. You want to make sure that it is a light coat so it doesn't go underneath your stencil. But then once you do that, you can peel it off and you've got a really fun little saying. If you don't have a Cricut but want to make something similar, you can grab some of those wood letters from Hobby Lobby and you could add those to it. Or you could just leave it that rustic color and you could use it to display things all year round. So once that was done, I needed to add something for my jute twine to hang from so I could actually clip up my cards. So I just added some little one inch finish nails to either side. And then I painted some of these really cute wood light bulbs. I got these from Amazon. They were an impulse buy and I love them. I painted them red and green and strung them up on some jute twine. Then I just started wrapping it around using those nails on the back. So then that way everything is going to be all nice and tight. And I like to use one continuous piece of jute twine. I think it helps it hold more sturdy. I'm just creating like a spider web look here so that I have somewhere to clip my cards. 
Here's what the back looks like with the jute twine on all of the nails. It just is nice to have it kind of grip there. And then I added some clips that I covered in washi tape. And then also these are just little gingerbread stickers from Hobby Lobby. This thing is so cute. I absolutely love it. I'm so excited to use it this Christmas. It's bigger than the one I currently have and I love getting Christmas cards. And so I wanna make sure I can display all of them. And this is gonna allow me to do that. If you want a smaller option, I had some scrap of the four inch wide planks. So I ended up painting one red and white and then I just nailed them together with two random braces on the back, just scrap I was using up. And then I got these three inch letters from Amazon. They were very affordable, they're a cute font. And I did Christmas grams, so similar to the other one. Added some jute twine on either side and then you can add clips, whether they be clipped to your jute twine or glued onto the sign. You just wanna make sure that your clip opening is facing up or outward so you can put cards on them. But this is a really great way to display your Christmas cards. You can put this on a shelf. You don't need to hang it anywhere. It doesn't take up a lot of space and it would be great for someone in an apartment where they wanna display their cards but don't have a ton of space. Now I had to recruit my buddy for this next one because this is a little bit of a sentimental project. This will be great for anybody that has a little one in their life. I took Finn and my mom had to help, but I ended up measuring him to use his height for this next one. So I'm grabbing another one of the six inch wide fence pickets and I'm measuring it to the height of Finn. So he is 39 inches. He's about 38 inches, but I gave it a little extra because I want this to be how tall he was at Christmas. And I'm also cutting a one by two for the hat. Then we're going to start by painting it white and we're gonna make a really cute snowman here. So about three quarters of the way up, you're white, and then you're gonna paint your little one by two that you cut black as well as the top of the fence picket. I decided to leave the dog ear at the top, but you could cut that off if you want it to be a straight top hat. So here's that coming together and then it's time to add our face. So I'm starting with a pencil to create a carrot nose. I like to give myself just a light outline instead of just winging it with the paint. It helps because you can erase the pencil on the white chalk paint. And then I'm using a detailed brush to just paint on the cute little carrot nose. Once that was dry so I didn't get orange paint all over my hand, I gave him two eyes and then some dots for his mouth. I glued on the little hat piece and then I added some white details with a white paint marker. Use some ribbon from my stash to give him a cute little scarf and I ended up tucking it underneath so it looked more like a scarf instead of just a bow tie. And then the final touches were some greenery on the hat and then I also added some dots down lower for his buttons. This is so cute and I really love that it is the height of Finn. I actually wrote on the back of the sign how tall he was and information about the first year in our new home. So then that way every year when we get it out, we could say, Finn, when we moved into this house, you were this tall. I love the sentimental value. And I can't take credit for this idea because my mom usually does this for her kindergarten students to give to their parents for Christmas. And this would also be a great grandparents gift as well. If you enjoy my videos, be sure to take a second and head down and check out the subscribe box. You want to make sure that you have that bell clicked and that just means YouTube will notify you every time I upload a new video so you won't miss any of my content. I recently saw a few different variations of these churches on Pinterest and I knew I had to try my hand at it so it is a big mashup plus my own flair on some of these projects. We're grabbing two of the skinnier fence pickets, so the four inch wide for this one, and I'm cutting everything on my miter box here to show you that you don't need a big saw to do these projects. I am cutting some different pieces to a variety of lengths and I'll show you the lengths in a minute. And then I am also going to cut some at a 45 degree angle and then some with a point like this. So you're going to want a 14 inch long piece in the center to 10 inch with 45 degree cuts on either side. And then your bottom, you can either do a 14 inch piece for a wider base or a 10 inch base for a smaller one. And then we're gonna stain all of the pieces in that briar smoke. Now I was going for a rustic look here, so I decided to use some Vaseline on top of dried stain. And you don't wanna to use too much, but you can add it to some corners or the center. And what it's gonna do is it's going to resist the stain taking that chalk paint that I'm putting on here. Here's what it looks like with a light coat. And then once it dries, I'm taking a paper towel and just pulling downward on it. And it's gonna give you kind of that chippy paint technique. I saw this on TikTok and I knew I wanted to try it and I thought these would be the perfect time. 
So now there's a few ways that you can assemble your churches or barns to make them look how you want. I decided to do one like this where the two outside pieces were overlapping and I am going to hook it together with these Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks. They do work on wood and so for little hobby crafts like this that aren't going to be holding any weight, it's a lot easier to hook them up like that. Then I'm adding some glue to the bottom and gluing it down to my base and this is the 10 inch base. For the white one, I did them flush all three across and this is a 14 inch base I put it on. Now to add some faux snow, I mixed up some white paint and some baking soda until it got thick and then I added it to the eaves of all of the different parts of both churches. You wanna make sure you pile it up a little bit so it looks like freshly fallen snow. I also added some to the bottom as well and I think it turned out so cute. I love that I'm gonna be able to use these for both Christmas as well as just winter snowy decor. And then the final touch was some jute twine and some little sprigs from this greenery pick I had in my stash from Hobby Lobby. Super simple and super rustic, really easy to make. And these also I think would sell really well at a vendor show. As I was randomly scrolling Pinterest recently, I saw this image of the stocking holder and I knew I had to make it. This is what inspired the entire video. This is from the blog Beyond the Fence Picket. I will link her blog down below. She's got a lot of cute fence picket projects. Now for this, you are going to want to grab some of those larger six inch pickets. I grabbed three for a total of 567. So then we're gonna go through and make all of our cuts for our snowmen. Now we did five snowmen, but I only had three dog-eared tops. So I set my saw to 35.3 degrees and I ended up cutting the tops of some of the pieces so they matched. So here's everything I mentioned before. The outside two are 14 inches, the middle one is 13 inches, and then the two smaller ones are 12 inches. Then I grabbed a one by two, laid it down and measured where I wanted it to kind of hang off like their hat brim. And I cut that down to size so that it fit like this. Then my last step was to take some more of that wider fence picket and lay it across the back to kind of figure out how long it needed to be. And this is going to allow us to hook all of our snowmen together as one piece. So here are all my pieces of wood that I cut for my snowmen. Now it's time to paint. So I painted all of them about the bottom three quarters in white. And then I laid them all out so I could figure out where I needed to put the hat. I painted the one by two with black matte chalk paint. And then I ended up laying it down and marking where I wanted the hat brim so I knew how far down the black paint needed to go. Then I repeated what I did with the white so that I have these black and white tops of the dog-eared fence pickets. Now because they are all different heights, I went through and put some blue painters tape in the center of all of them, kind of where I wanted all the faces to line up because I was doing them individually and that really helped so that when they get put together all the faces are even, even though they aren't the same size. Now I'm doing a similar face to what I did for the fin height fence picket earlier. I'm just kind of drawing it out and then I'm laying them next to each other to figure out where I want the nose to line up and also what way I want them to face. I also added on top of the wet orange paint a little bit of brown paint and mixed it in. That just gave a little bit of depth to the carrot with it still being one solid orange color. Once those were dry, I did the same face that I did on that other one. So two eyes and then five dots for the mouth. And once those were dry, it was time to assemble. So I'm going to lay all of them face down in the order that I want and make sure that the bottom is flush. Then I'm taking my kind of stringer piece across the back, my brace, laying it down and then using my one inch nails to nail it down. The one inch nails are key here because you don't want it popping through the face of your snowman, but one inch works perfect. And then I'm doing the same thing with the hat. Now I had some holes on the top from the nail gun, so I decided to use some plastic wood. It's just wood filler. I only needed a little bit because it's a teeny tiny hole from the brad nail. I filled it, sanded it, and then ended up adding a little bit more of that black chalk paint so you wouldn't even know the nails were in there. Now I wanted to add the hook similar to the inspiration so that if I wanted to hang stuff I could. So I got these little black hooks in a big pack from Amazon. I ended up drilling some pilot holes and then screwing them into the center of each board. To finish it off, I just tied on some Christmas ribbon because I wanna be able to switch out the red tartan ribbon for maybe a black and white buffalo check after Christmas so that this is something that could go through Christmas into my winter decor. While I was looking for inspo for this video, I came across Funky Junkie Interiors on Pinterest and she has a lot of pictures of decorating with old Coca-Cola crates. 
I've wanted one for so long, but I haven't been able to find one. So I'm gonna use scrap from some of these six inch wide pickets. I'm cutting two pieces at 20 inches long and two pieces at eight inches long. That is gonna allow me to make my box. I also grabbed from Menards some of these old like hammered looking vintage drawer pulls and those are going to be the handles on my box. To drill holes for my handles I'm just taking some painters tape applying it to the back of my pull and then because it's indented that allows me to use it to drill directly through the painters tape so I know right where the holes need to be. I'm using that same piece on the other side so it is the right size in the right location. And to give it that old worn look, I'm gonna take some water and some gray acrylic paint, mix it up, and I'm gonna gray wash this wood. So I'm just putting it on and then I'm using an old sock to really buff it in so that it's not like covering like paint, it's just kind of a wash. This makes it look really weathered and it looks like you got it off of a palette, which is awesome. Then to assemble my box, it was really simple. I just took some wood glue on either side of the eight inch piece, used a clamp to hold it down. If you don't have a clamp, you could just use a friend with hands to help you hold it. And then while the wood glue is setting, I'm also going to use those one inch nails that I got for the other sign, and I'm just going to nail it together. Now, if you don't have nails, you can absolutely use screws for this. Just make sure you drill pilot holes. I touched up any areas that I missed with the gray wash and then I added in my handles and my box was complete. Now for the Coca-Cola element. I'm gonna use that magic cover that I talked about earlier from Dollar Tree. I like to use this for stencils. You just apply it right to your mat and you put it in your Cricut just like you'd cut vinyl. I had my assistant help me here and I cut it on the washi tape setting. It cuts really great for me. You just wanna make sure you have a sticky mat. I went ahead and weeded it like a stencil, so I weeded out the inside of it, used my paper transfer tape from Expressions Vinyl and applied it right to my box. And then I am doing the same thing that I did on the card holder earlier, just stippling up and down with some black paint. Now the goal here is to make sure you can see the outline of the drink Coca-Cola, but you don't have all of it covered so it looks rustic. Now this image, I kind of piecemealed together from a few different logos, so I will link this file over on my blog that I put together so you can use it for free if you want to do the same thing. Now while it's wet, I am peeling it off so it doesn't seal down to my wood at all. And that is it. Super quick and easy. It turned out so much better than I even thought. I think it really looks like the inspiration. And for Christmas, I do plan to add some greenery inside of it, but I also like that I could flip the box around and it has one side that is plain. So this is gonna be really multi-use decor, not just Christmas. Now we've cut up a lot of wood in this video and that left me with a lot of scraps and you guys know I'm a sucker for a good scrap wood project. So here's what I did with my scraps. I took some large and small scraps and cut them into squares and then I painted them with some nutmeg brown. So the same color that we did the gingerbread houses earlier. I decided to make some gingerbread men and women. So I started by adding some red paint and buffing it in with my finger. And then I got these little unfinished wood pieces off of Amazon for the nose. I painted those red and then I started to draw the face. So I did circle eyes. I added some eyelashes for my gingerbread woman, a little smiley face over the cheeks, and then my noses. You can add some additional detail with a white paint marker. And then I glued on all of my noses and finished it off with some rickrack ribbon around the top and the bottom. I did white on my three small ones and then red and white on my larger like gingerbread mommy <laughs> that it looks like. And these turned out so cute. These were a great use of scrap. They go really well with my sign as well as my little gingerbread cookies that I made earlier in the video. And they're also great with my little marshmallows. I made that in my baking video last year. so check out that video if you wanna see that tutorial. I also wanted to use some of my scraps in my jigsaw to make some fun shapes for a tiered tray. So I started by kind of sketching out a circle and then I used my jigsaw to cut around the top to create a curved surface. I also did the same thing with some four inch wide fence pickets. Then because it's curved, I went through with my power sander and used my wrist to kind of rock it here so that it's giving it a sanded look, but also curved. Make sure all of your edges are sanded down. And then we're gonna make these into some cute little beanie hats. So I got a pack of Christmas fabric, just some fat quarters off of Amazon. They had some really cute prints. 
I cut a piece to size and then stuck it down with hot glue. The Mod Podge just wasn't cooperating here with wood and fabric, so I decided to just use hot glue. Then I'm gonna stretch the pieces on the straight sides as much as I can because it's not gonna gap on me because they are straight sides. Tuck in your edges and then I went around the top and created some slits so then that way I could kind of pull it tight so you could still see the curve at the top of the wood. Once that was all glued down, all I needed to do was cut another piece of fabric just to cover over the top to make sure the back was covered because you'll see it from different angles on a tiered tray. Then it was time for embellishment, so I created a pom-pom with these new pom-pom makers I ordered off of Amazon. I really like them and they're really easy to use to create pom-poms. They're really affordable as well. I made it, trimmed the edges, and then glued it onto the top of my hat. And then I took some more of that white yarn and wrapped it around the bottom of the hat to make it look a little bit more like a folded over beanie. I made a variety of different sizes from the scrap and I also like that I did the green and white so I could use those for winter decor as well. And these are so cute. I love the prints and they're gonna be a perfect addition to my holiday tiered trays. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to leave me a comment and let me know what your favorite project was today. And also head down to the description box for a link to that full playlist so you can see everybody's video. A huge thank you to Shannon for inviting me to be a part of this collab and be sure to check out that Christmas channel. You will be so happy that you did and hit subscribe if you're new so you don't miss a future video. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.